Hey everybody, today on the Rado channel, we're running through the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the adventure game. But before I begin, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that if I make any rules goofs, you know what they are. And if you don't know, I'm Shay Parker. I help Rado cover even more games, games like the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the adventure game. And yes, that is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, if you know Skyrim, you know that it is a big game that must be contained in an equally large title, I guess. Uh, now, this is a game that is based on uh, Skyrim. This is a very popular, very well-known uh, adventure game, but in case you don't know, we find ourselves in the land of Skyrim and the uh, continent uh, or the country of Tamriel, uh, and we are going to be uh, adventuring around the world. There's all kinds of stuff going on, but this is a prequel uh, to the events of the Skyrim video game. So we're not, uh, we are not Dragonborn, we're not the Dovahkiin, uh, you know, not Lord and Shouts, but we are instead a mem members of an organization called the Blades, sort of like a, a mercenary outfit. And we are some, you know, new recruits, but some things have happened. I'll get to the story in just a second. We're going to be going around the map, and we're going to be completing our main quests, our personal quests. We've got some side quests as well. A lot of things are going to be happening, and this is a very open world game. So I'm going to be just going along, kind of doing whatever I feel like doing in the moment. I've got two characters here. I've got a Dunmer, and I've got a Nord. These are uh, different uh, not races exactly, more more like nationalities. Nords are like Vikings, uh, though they are human. And then the Dunmer, I believe, are Dark Elves, that kind of thing. And these uh, character cards give me some special uh, a special ability and slight things to go towards when, I, when I'm leveling up in the future. Uh, so let's get started with the main quest here. I've got this little, uh, little card that's telling me a little bit about what's going on, and it says... Year 175 of the Fourth Era, the Great War rages across Tamriel. A group of young blades recruits go on their first mission, a patrol around the forest of Cyrodiil. A Thalmor ambush catches them off guard, and they barely escape alive. Upon returning to their camp, they find it desolated. The Thalmor have been here. Cyrodiil is not safe for them anymore. They escape to Skyrim, far from the Thalmor's clutches. In Skyrim, the Reachmen have conquered Markarth, and tensions between them and the Nords are rising. Uh, and then I flip it over. It says, you know, there's no special rules for this chapter. Every uh, chapter will have something like this. Um, and it tells me how I'm going to fail. Specifically, if a main quest card uh, it reaches its um, you know, discord limit. Every card can hold these little tokens that are representing, you know, discord and, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of like chaos going on in, in the world. And so I need to make sure that, that my quest cards don't get filled up with those. If they do, then I'll read you know the, the fail state of the quest. Uh, and the way that I'm going to accomplish my quest is by going through our main quest cards. Each of us has uh, gotten one of them. So my, my Dunmer here has been arrested at the very beginning uh, of the story. Uh, it's actually very similar to original Skyrim. It says, for months, I've been rebuilding my life in Windhelm. One day, guards break into my home and arrest me for no apparent reason. I'm thrown in an empty cell and left there to rot. The guards show up drunk at night, celebrating my capture. One of them falls asleep close to my door. I can see the keys poking out of his pocket, and while he's still asleep, I grab them. I escape through the Windhelm jail. My path takes me to the barracks, where one of the guards who arrested me sleeps. I search through his belongings until I find a mysterious note. To all Windhelm guards, guards, dangerous criminals are living in your midst. Their names are behind this letter. You must find and capture them. You'll be handsomely rewarded. Oiva Karna. On the back of the letter, I find a list of names of blades, mine included. And then it tells me to place my figure, my player figure, in Windhelm. So Windhelm is one of the strongholds of this land. Um, each, uh, this big map has a bunch of sections. So Windhelm is in the East March section. It's kind of got these little borders. The uh, color's going to be a little bit faint, but you can kind of see the differences between all the different places. So, I have gone there, and then I have a choice. At the bottom gives me two options. Option one, I'll ask around at the inn with septons at the ready. Septons are money. Uh, septons at the ready in case bribes are needed. I guess that would have been obvious. I just kept reading. All right, so I get to choose two equipment cards, and I grab a quest. The option two says, I'll seek the assistance of an information broker to find Moiva Karnai. And again, choose two equipment cards, and grab uh, a different uh, main quest. So do I want to go somewhere where I know I'm going to need money 
in, in, in order to you know, bribe people, potentially, or um, I can seek the assistance of an information broker. I'm gonna go with the information broker side. And then the choose two equipment cards, well, that's something I've already done. Um, I grabbed uh, a little bit of armor and I grabbed a spell because my Dunmer is actually gonna be pretty useful at doing spell attacks. So I grabbed this little Sparks spell and it's got a lot of stuff on it that will come up during combat. Um, a lot of different things, but basically I know how to cast some Sparks out of my hand uh, like a good little Dark Elf. So I place my figure in Windhelm and I need to grab uh, another I need to grab my main quest card. So I'd say grab 166. So I've got this big box full of cards. So I find 166, five, 166. And it says, run away. I decide to look for my blade friend, Karelian the Hunter, at his house in Winterhold. So now I need to take one of my little quest markers, which look just like the Skyrim quest markers, and find Winterhold, which luckily is right next to me. Go right there. Um, now, there's a little bit more on here, uh, which is sort of the, the flavor text that I will read when I get there. And I can see what the objective is. And I now, uh, what I can see, I don't really see what the results of this are, but I know I'm going to be, I'm going to need some lock picking ability. Or it would help if I had some. I currently, I don't have any skills, but I can get them uh, if, I, if I level up. Leveling up is not, you know, it doesn't happen immediately. So that's what I've got for now. Now on uh, right brain side, I have been captured. Uh, I wake up with a terrible headache. My hands and feet are bound to a chair. What happened last night? A man, my captor, sleeps on a straw mattress nearby. I easily break my bindings and face the sleeping guard. I dispatch him and explore the room. My captor's house is in a state of decay. He thought the roof collapsed a long time ago and chicken freely roam around. Inside a satchel, inside a satchel, I find a mysterious note. Dear Neerth, I hope you're good at finding people. This letter contains a list of names of people I need to find and capture. I'll make it worth your while. Moiva Karnai. So this Moiva person is really messing with us, so we need to figure out what's going on there. On the back of the letter, I find a list of names of blades, mine included. Place your figure in Riften. So I'm down here over in the Rift. Uh, again, um, I'm gonna cho choose option one or option two, and I'm gonna grab some equipment and grab some cards. Now, these options are actually the same as the ones in the uh, other characters um, quest. Now there are uh, a couple different sets of options um, depending on which card I drew. I drew these uh, starting cards randomly. There are four of them. Um, and so the other two that I didn't pick would have different options. But it doesn't matter that I have the same options here. If I were to choose the same option as my friend, then I would just grab the card that is one higher. Sort of the way that they handle these things. So if I say I also want to seek the assistance of an information broker, uh, I, I will look for 166 because 166 is there. I grab 167. The wrong type of thief. Contacting the Thieves Guild in Riften is surprisingly simple. I arrange a meeting in an abandoned house at midnight. This needs to be in Riften, which are where I already am. And I'll be rolling uh, with speech. Again, don't have speech, could try and get it. Or I could just run headfirst into, uh, <laughs> into this situation. So now that we've gotten our starting, oh yeah, and the uh, equipment that I've got over here, I've got a big ax and I've got some hide armor, which is light armor, which is actually gonna allow me to sneak around a little bit. Oh yeah, just put a little marker over there. Um, and I'm gonna grab a token. Uh, I'll just try to remember it. Um, I'm gonna grab one of these tokens just to help me remember who the first player is. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna grab one of these arrows. So I'm gonna start with left brain as the first player. Got a little error to remind myself. And uh, the first thing the first player does is draws an event card. So beginning of it, we've got a call to arms. This is a world quest. So companions are looking for new members to join their ranks. Can you prove yourself worthy? So this is a quest that is uh, showing up in White Run. White Run is this big city in the center here. Um, and it's gonna have me testing my might. Uh, just a skill, these are, all these things are skill checks. They are improved by, as you can see, skill checks improved by certain skills. So if I have one-handed, two-handed, or archery, then I can get this. And there are certain results that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna put this here. I'm not gonna go to that right away. Maybe I can you know, improve myself a little bit better. But the other thing that comes up with these event cards is I need to put out these two of these uh, strife tokens. So. These can go pretty much anywhere 
uh, as that can hold them. And cards that can hold them will have a number on them. So on top of our quests, you see they can hold four tokens, which means that I, uh, you know, if I want to spread things out, I'll just put one here, one here. I can, we're probably going to complete these uh, pretty quickly. We're going to get new quest cards. So I'm fine with putting them out like that. Um, could have also put them on the, uh, the world quest or could put them on any of these cities that are shown in the top right. But that, I don't necessarily want to do that just yet because that, that has some negative effects that uh, I don't want to deal with. So got this world quest. This is something I can do, but I don't have to just yet. This will stay here until the end of the game or until it gets, you know, uh, removed because it has had too many tokens placed on it. So I'm going to start, uh, I start with my Dunmer on the top right there. I could go straight to Winterhold and try to uh, get this quest going. I think I'm going to do it because, you know, the quest I don't think is going to be particularly difficult. So one, two, go to Winterhold, get to my objective, and uh, I'm going to complete this one. Basically just discard this right away. And it says, the place is empty. A neighbor tells me he left in a rush a few weeks back. Inside, I realize he barely had time to gather his belongings. I look around for clues. Um, so I have an objective, open a strange looking chest. And on the bottom, you can see what this objective entails. I need to roll, so I roll three dice and I add lock picking if I have it. I am trying to get uh, one of these triangle results and I can push by spending leaf tokens. Um, pushing means I will get an extra die after I roll, if I didn't get the results I wanted. So I've got these three skill dice. These are 50-50, uh, these like runic knots. Um, two of the six sides are the triangles, which are what I'm going for. And then one side is a diamond, which is a lot more difficult to get. But I just need one triangle. I think I'll be fine. So I'm going to roll. And I got it. So because I got the, the triangle, that is a success. And uh, I go to the back and I read the success uh, Results. So it says, I open the, ch the trap chest without any problem. I gain five coins. I'll take one of these on its five side, put it in my little money pouch, and I get two experience. Two little experience tokens. Should run ones. I go here. Now, once I get to uh, seven experience, I'm going to level up. Um, but until then, I I'm just collecting this experience. So I have. Succeeded. In a hidden compartment behind the bed, I find a note signed by Carillion, the hunter, addressed to any blade to find it. Someone was on his trail and he escaped. The note also mentions Moiva's recent activities. He points at Moiva Karnai and her hideout in an abandoned case in Hafinger. So option one, I will storm the hideout by myself, or option two, I will hire some mercenaries. Uh, now, I'm playing as this person who is uh, a magician, not heavily armored or anything. So I think that hiring some mercenaries is probably the way to go for me. So I'm going to choose option two. Hire some mercenaries looking for card 174. So bring out my thing of cards again. I got right to it and then I, I lost it. Where? 174. Clean hands. No need to break a sweat when I can pay someone else to do it for me. So I drop a ping in a cave in Hoffinger. So Hoffinger's up here. It's only one cave, so that's the one I'm going to go to. And that's my new objective. I am going to need some speech on this one. Ooh, this one's going to be a little bit difficult because we're only three dice plus speech. If I have speech, I'll get extra dice. I'll need three of this specific type of result, but I can push for, with money. So the more money I spend, uh, the more likely I'll be able to complete this objective. So I want to have some money before I get there. I just got five coins. That's okay, but I think I can do better. Um, but anyway, that's going to be my turn. I've moved and I've done my action. Now on the right brain, I'm going to move as well. Now moving, I should have actually done both of the moves simultaneously because if they were near each other uh, and they wanted to, you know, go into a dungeon or a, a mine or whatever, then they could do that together. But we are not doing that just yet. Um, so uh, I just wanted to do all of theirs uh, on their own. Now, I could uh, probably do the same thing. I could just stay here in Riften and do this ability. Oh, I suppose the other thing that Left Brain could have done is, you know, encountered the city. Um, but I don't necessarily, let's just say they didn't. They chose not to do that. So in Riften, I can do this event right now. I can try basically the same thing. A chance of, of, of getting it. It wouldn't be too hard. But I'll show you. 
This wants similar, same as the other one, you know, wants speech, but I want two of those knots and I can push with money. Since I don't have any money, I think it would be better for me to get some before attempting this quest. A couple ways to, uh, to get money. You can try to, you know, fight um, enemies by going to any of these other like diamond spaces because these are all essentially dungeons that I can go in and fight some monsters. I bet people are gonna have coins. So if I go to one like this mine, I bet I'll fight some enemies and deal with them that way. Or I could just stay here in Riften and encounter the city. Maybe I could, uh, I'll, I'll, have, I'll draw sort of a random encounter card, which will usually give me some resources and potentially a personal quest, which would then give me you know, ways to potentially make some money or do something else. Uh, I think I'm gonna do that for now. We'll see how that goes. So I decide not to move anywhere and I'm going to encounter the city. I have a choice. I can either go to the city or I can do my quest. So I can't do both. I'm choosing the city. It says, Hasset Crow. Help, my husband is dying, please come quickly. Um, for some reason, that immediately gives me a token of my choice. There's uh, leaves, there's crystals, and there's ore. Uh, all of these are good for like crafting and upgrading stuff. So I'm gonna grab, let's say uh, an ore, why not? And then I uh, have the uh, you know immediate result of trying to heal Hasset's husband. So this is a, a simple test. Um, Three dice plus restoration. I don't have any restoration, so it's just three dice. Trying to get three of these Celtic knot symbols. Probably not gonna get that. I can push with leaves, but we'll see how I do uh, uh, as I roll. Oh wow, I just absolutely did it. Um, so I've healed Hassat's husband. Uh, as a success, I gain three experience. So I'll grab this on its three side. And then once I've done that, so I've done this part of the you know little exploration. That's cool, I've done that, but now, uh, if I, I, I have the choice of gaining this quest. If I do, this card will be removed from the game. Won't be, won't come back in any future chapters. If I don't, this card might come back. But I think it's, uh, you know, worth it. There's plenty of cards. I don't need them. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna uh, discard this card and grab quest 86. So quest 86, grabbing it from here uh, as always. This is now a personal quest. This is not a main quest like this guy is, but this is still something only I am able to do. And it says, Justice Elixir, part one. I try my best, but Asset's husband's condition doesn't improve. He's been poisoned. Only the sorcerers in the College of Winterhold can help him now. So I take one of my uh, pings and I go and to find Winterhold. Oh, hey, that's where my friend is. So uh, the objective, the Wizards of the College give me an antidote. I can only hope I get it back in, I get back in time. Interesting. So I need to go there, pick up uh, the the objective, and, and come back. Essentially, this is sort of a fetch quest. Uh, and so I need to go there, come back. But every turn, I will I'm going to add a token to this quest card, and I will fail this uh, quest if I get too many. And if I do, then well, I'm going to have to uh, read the uh, failure result for that. So return edit. Um, so that's going to be my you know, main action there. But because I'm in a town, there are a few other things I could do. I could sell some items. Basically, I go to the market. I can sell some items. I can buy some items. I can craft some basic items if I had uh, the materials for it. I do have one ore. I wonder if there's anything basic that I could craft. I got this deck of cards, and on the bottom right, there's sort of the crafting requirements. I either uh, or bottom, I, I'd need two ore for, to make this iron sword. I wonder if I could make like a shield or something. Now, it looks like all these are require two ore to craft. So probably not gonna be able to do any of these. Or uh, I could spend two leaves to craft a, a potion, but I actually need leaves to use the potion. So I, I'm good on that. In fact, there's not really anything else that I wanna do in town. So I'm gonna say my turn is over. We're gonna pass it back. Well, we're not gonna pass it back to left brain. We're gonna end the round, because both of us have gone, and I'm gonna meet the new first player in the next round. But before we do that, let's draw another event card. It says, Daedric Invasion. So I move one Daedric token uh, towards the nearest stronghold. I don't have one out. And it says, if there are no Daedric tokens on the board, place one on a forest space. So there are Daedra tokens. There are a few different enemies 
um, that have different tokens, and these are sort of roaming monsters. They're the big, like, giants that you would see roaming around uh, the, the world. Now, I can place this on any forest space, but I unless I want to fight this right now, and Daedra are pretty powerful, so I don't think I do, um, I am going to put it somewhere kind of far away from me. Let's go all the way over there. I have to place it on a forest space. Uh, the only issue is these can move around if a, a, an event like this comes up again. Now, the other thing that this event does is I have to add two more of these tokens because they're pretty much always going to have, have me adding a couple tokens. Put another one here. Um, put one here. And then because my personal quest specifically says I add one every turn, I'll grab one there as well. So what do I want to do? Well, I could make my way up to Winterhold. I think that's a decent thing to do. Uh, on your turn, you can move up to four spaces. But I don't just want to go there. I want to do some things on the way. So maybe I go here. You can move, like I said, you move four spaces. So I want to be, because I can't make it there this round, I'll be somewhere that's four spaces away. So if I go here, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that could be it. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go to this cave because caves are generally pretty easy dungeons that I can do and I can get some rewards out of it. And if I wanted to have both of my characters go here uh, and work together on this cave, then I could do that as well. Let's see. I, okay. So I'm going there, uh, left brain, because again, you're supposed to move all at once. See where Left Brain wants to go. Now we have our new quest is this mountain over here in Hoffinger. And, but I wanna get some money on the way. Now I could go and help out uh, that, that fight over there, but I think that they might be able to handle that on their own. I think I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go to this forest space. Forests are a little bit different from all the other, um, you know, dungeony places because they're not dungeons. They will have quest cards much like the cities do. Not quest cards, but encounter cards. So I've gotten here, and now I'm going to encounter this dungeon. I've got a card that tells me what enemies I'm facing um, on campaign one, chapter one. And in a, in a cave, I'm going to face two animals. Animals generally are a little bit easier to deal with. So I grab two animals off the top of this deck. This is not random, uh, not entirely. They are uh, sort of tiered. So currently I'm only facing the level zero uh, monsters and I've got two right here. I'm just gonna place them right on the map and uh, we will flip over the first one to see what we got. It is a mud crab, a nice easy little guy. Um, so this mud crab, has a few things to keep in mind. Uh, one, it has this sneak value, which is if I want to sneak up on it, I need to be able to beat that. It's also got some red armor, sort of heavy armor. It's a crab, it's got a shell. It doesn't have a lot of heavy armor, but it will specifically protect it from heavy attacks, which is mostly what I do with my iron battle axe. But I am also able to do light attacks, so maybe I attack that way. Um, and if I defeat it, I'm gonna get one XP. It's a crab. So I'm trying to attack this. I, uh, I actually wanna sneak up on this first. If you're able to sneak, there's almost no reason not to. Um, it gets a little trickier if you've got multiple players in the same fight, but for now, it's an easy choice. I'm able to sneak because I'm wearing light armor, um, which is why I chose my light armor. Um, it's, you know, it allows me to sneak up on enemies. Even though I've got this giant hulking battle ax, um, I'm able to just sneak in and try and conk it on the head. So I'm going to roll these dice, and what I'm trying to get is one Celtic Knot, because that's what it was asking for, for the sneak value. So let's see if I'm able to do that. Uh, yeah, I was able to do it, and because I snuck up on it, I can do a sneak attack, which is me choosing any one of the offensive actions, which are the swing or the chop, without having to roll for it. I essentially get a free turn. And because this is just a little crab, and I choose the chop action, I deal four heavy damage. It has two armor, so I, I see that I do four damage, that's one, two higher. And because I'm attacking this type of armor, that deals one, two damage to it. Once all of the defense cubes are gone from a creature, it has been defeated. So 
kill the crab in one shot. Um, don't even feel a little bad about it. Shouldn't have come at me, mud crab. Um, but that was only the first monster. I've got a second monster. This is a skeever. Skeever is like a, a horrible dog. Uh, again, has a sneak value of one. This is working with light armor, which means that if I can, you know, sneak up on it uh, as well. Oh, sorry. One thing I forgot to do is when I take these offensive actions, I need to spend the endurance that it shows in this space right here. So even though I wasn't you know, rolling for it, I had to spend the endurance. But then between fights, your endurance refreshes. So I'm here against the skeever. I'm gonna try and sneak up on it again. Uh, the reason I'm rolling four dice, normally you always roll three, but my hide armor gives me sneak one. So because it's got that little extra, I am able to uh, sneak up on it a little better. So I'm gonna sneak up on this one as well. Um, and I absolutely did. So I can just waltz right in and demolish it. But let's say I didn't. Let's say I failed that sneak roll. Uh, and now we're in actual combat. The first thing I do is I'm gonna roll one of these dice and I'm gonna compare it to the symbols on the card. I roll these two swords, which does activate its bite. So it is going to deal one heavy damage against me because that's what it's showing right here. And if I had heavy armor, that would reduce the damage. And if it gets all the way to zero, I wouldn't take any damage, but I would lose a stamina or an endurance, whatever it's called. However, um, because this is heavy damage and I don't have any heavy armor, I'm gonna take one point of heavy damage. So now I need to deal uh, if I'm attacking with light damage, I need to deal a lot because it has three light armor. But if I'm attacking with heavy damage, I can, any, any damage I deal will reduce this by one. So it has three. I would love to kill it in one shot. So I'm trying to chop it, uh, which means I would roll my dice and I'm trying to get this diamond, which is actually a difficult one to achieve. So let's see if I'm able to do that. I will make the attack, so I spend an endurance to do that. Uh, but I did, I got a diamond, which means it is defeated. I dealt four heavy damage to it, it didn't have any heavy armor, so that removed it, uh, and I get another XP. So I have defeated the uh, all of the monsters in that dungeon, which means that I am going to get uh, some loot for it. I get a basic loot card. So I just draw one basic loot card and I got some lock picking tools. Now, I there are uh, animals in here as well, but they are there are also traps that I might find. So I'm gonna hold on to this, this little lock picking tools. This will help me out if I'm facing any traps, which is pretty useful. But at the end of my uh, dungeoning, I'm going to take all the cards in my discard pile and the top card of uh, the pile here and shuffle them up. So I might fi face these mud crabs again, that skeever again, or I might face you know, that top card that was in there. Um, however, if I had leveled up, if I was a higher level than that, then that might not happen because you know, as it said, it was level zero. If I've gotten to you know level zero or one or whatever, then I would be discarding those creatures as I face them so that next time I face them, I'm facing stronger monsters. Um, it's actually very reminiscent of Skyrim where the, the game kind of level, it scales its, its difficulty along with your strength. So this is just modeling that. So I've done my uh, little, you know, <laughs> little, little questing, not questing really, but just um, farming XP essentially. Uh, five XP, so I'm getting close to what I need to level up. Uh, and I didn't get any money, which I guess it was to be expected. I was facing animals and not people, but um, that's okay. I don't necessarily need the money right now. Let's go to left brain and see what they're doing. They are in a forest, so I'm gonna draw a forest card. These are just like the uh, city cards. You know, they will, oh, or maybe not. Uh, the thing is, sometimes when you're in the forest, a giant attacks. I am not prepared for this. Uh, giants roam the, roam the roads, displaced by other creatures in the land. Clear 369. So what it says clear, that just means I need to survive this. Um, there's not really a reward for this other than whatever uh, will be on this monster card. But this is quite uh, the monster. 
Oh boy, this is not something I can survive. Uh, so I am definitely going to want to run away from this. It's got four heavy armor. It's got six light armor. Uh, so I would need to bring both of these down all the way to zero. Meanwhile, all I got is some sparks. I've got some novice robes that doesn't protect me from anything. If this guy hits me once, I'm going to be done. So I want to make sure that I can run away from this. And luckily, it's not that hard to run away. I basically just choose to do so. Um, but unfortunately, I do have to add one of these tokens every time I do. So I've got this giant in front of me. There's, I have no chance of defeating this guy. So I'm just going to run away, which means I need to take one of these. Uh, I'll, I'll take the... I'll take the hit on this one because, you know, I'm, I'm the one doing the running away. So I'm do that. I'll just take this, put it back. Um, it's just too much. Giants are a big deal. Normally, walking around in the forest gets you some good stuff. But, you know, that one, uh, sometimes it happens. So that's the end of the round. We are going to pass the first player token over to left brain. And at the new round, draw a new event card. It's another world quest, the Sky Forge. Skyforge lies dormant. Still, you can forge some weapons with it. Put a quest marker in White Run. Another one in White Run. Okay. There's a lot going on in this town. This is sort of the central hub of the world, I think. And uh, this will help me if I have smithing. You know, if I'm able to do that, I'll get some advanced uh, weaponry. Again, I don't have smithing. It's a difficult thing, a difficult check to make, so I don't necessarily want to go for it right now. However, my Nord does have... An ability. Now, I haven't showed the abilities uh, so far, but one, they always have combat ability that they are able to do, or uh, always combat, but the ones that I have are. Um, and then there are some things that will uh, improve if I learn the specific skills. So maybe I'm going to go after smithing. It actually sounds like a pretty good idea for, uh, for my Nord. Okay, but we're on the Dunmer right now. I want to... I think I want to go to White Run. I'm just going to keep going towards Hoffinger. I have four move. I can go one, two, three. Solitude. Yeah, you know what? I was trying to have a, a decent little basic normal card, but I didn't. So I want to have a, a, something better. Uh, right Brain, what are you going to do? Well, we were trying to go to Winterhold, so might as well keep going with that. Once we do that and then we come back, I bet we'll have enough XP we can level up. So one, two, three. Four. We're both going to cities. So left brain, we're in solitude. We're going to explore the town. And I could do things in any order I want. I could sell equipment or buy equipment, do stuff like that beforehand. Um, but at the moment, uh, I just want to go to town. Alien, grieving bride. My fiancé, he's missing. I fear he's in trouble. Help me. Again, I get to gain one uh, resource of, of, of any type. I think I want to gain crystals because... I can upgrade my novice robes um, with crystals, and I think that will actually help me quite a bit. Um, and I'm using clairvoyance, rolling three dice plus illusion, trying to get two Celtic knots, uh, and I did. So because I've succeeded, I gain two of these experience tokens. I'm just gonna flip this over. So I have four XP, not bad. And I could gain another quest. I think I might as well. It's good to have personal quests, not only because they give you extra ways to get XP, but also they give you different places to place these tokens so that you don't lose your main quests. All right. I can destroy this for quest number 122. So 122, where are you? I just saw it. 122. Delayed Wedding, part one. My search for Alian's fiance takes me to an old ruin. I need to place thing down in Hjalmarch. Hjalmarch is where I just was. And I need to place it in one of these, uh, what are they called, Dwimmer Mines? This game has different names for, you know, orcs and dwarves. I think the dwarves are called Dwimmer. So that's actually one of the most dangerous places you can go in this game, are the Dwimmer Mines. Uh, oh, I guess those aren't the Dwimmer Mines. Those are crypts or something like that? or. or Ruins? I think they're ruins. That's what it is. So, I have a, a quest in ruins for, to find this woman's fiancé. So that's uh, the, the basic quest that I've done. Now that I have a crystal, though, I want to enchant my novice robe. So I'm going to spend a crystal 
and draw one enchantment card. Now, if I had more crystals, I could draw multiple cards and choose the one that I like the best because I only have the one, I'm just gonna take what I get. So, I've drawn a card and it says Absorb Magicka. When losing any health due to a uh, magic uh, you know, attack, I will restore one of my Magicka. So that could be pretty useful because my spell does require me to spend Magicka in order to use it. So that seems like an okay thing to have. I, my novice robes will absorb Magicka. That's also pretty good because my character ability, uh, I'll try and get in combat so I can start using some of these and show you how they work. But basically in combat, I can spend a health to turn on my flame cloak deals two magic damage to all enemies and player characters. That's me as well. But I can uh, absorb a little bit of it. One, I have uh, this robe, which you know will take one of that damage. And then I'll absorb the other one, improve my magic. So that's not bad. Anything else I want to do in Solitude? I have five money, but I want to save my money to uh, hire those... Um, to hire the, whatchamacallit, the, the, the blades, uh, mercenaries. Jeez, words are hard sometimes. Um, anyway, right brain is over in Winterhold. We are going to, what are we doing in Winterhold? Oh, that's right. We need to get this objective. So I've gone to Winterhold. The wizards of the college give me an antidote. I can only hope to get it back in time. So now I need to go to a mountain in the rift. Uh, rift is back down here as a mountain, so a cave. And, oh yeah, every turn, adding, did I forget to do, I don't know if I forgot to do an event. I may have forgotten to do an event. I definitely forgot to add some of these tokens. I'm just gonna do that one. Uh, let's go one there, so we're running low. It's actually kind of dangerous to have three, even though it can hold four before it gets discarded because there's an event that just adds one to everything. Go one, call the arms, and yeah, I'll hold on to one. Okay, let's just say that I, I may have forgotten to, to draw an event card. Oh well. So, I've gone to Winterhold, I've picked up the elixir, I need to take it back here, and uh, to, to save uh, Zet's husband. Again, if I uh, wanted to do something here, I could, but I don't really have I don't have any money. I don't have anything that I'm really able to do with this. So I think that's fine. I'll, I'll just be there for now. And uh, that'll be the end of that round. We switch back over. Now let's do to make sure we do an event card. Um, we're also gonna make sure we pop one over here. Preparing for the storm, another world quest. The Thieves Guild in Riften is hoarding items in case they are needed. Riften. So basically this is a quest, it wants speech, it's difficult, but for every item you throw into it, it just gives you one success. You need three successes with the diamonds, which are the hardest ones to do. That's hard to do, but if you have a lot of extra items, then you might be able to do it. That's the end. Uh, so we need to make our way forward. Again, I want to be, I can't get here in one turn. If I had money, I could hire a stagecoach and just go right there, but I don't have any cash. So I'm gonna make my way, let's see, one, two. Uh, if I want to, you know what? I'm gonna go to another cave, fight uh, some monsters. I'll probably fight that, you know, the mud crab and the skeever again, but maybe I'll get lucky and find a trap because the traps tend to have money. So I've gone there and left brain. I think left brain, we're just gonna go straight to our quest. And that's gonna be that. So right brain goes first. We are in a cave again, so we're gonna face two more animals. And the first one we grab is a bear. Oh, maybe there's no traps in the, a in the animal section. Uh, I guess that would make sense because they're animals. Um, but I'm facing a bear. A uh, bear has four light armor. Again, I've got a big ax. If I can sneak up on it, then I'll be able to uh, just hit it right away. But this guy's sneak is a little bit more difficult. Instead of uh, needing one like the others, it says it need three. So I'm rolling four dice. It is possible. We'll see. I did it. I got three. I got real lucky here because if I hadn't, it would get to attack me. Um, and it has a few other things they can hit me with. Uh, all these are pretty rough, but 
uh, going back here, because I snuck up on it, I am going to, oh well, yeah. So I forgot to do this, but I took a little bit of damage in the last round, but after combat is completely done, you just get all your health back. Um, and you get your stamina back between rounds. So I'm gonna spend one stamina to do my big chop, because which I can just do because I snuck up on it. Deals four heavy damage, it has no heavy armor. So one, two, three, four. The bear is defeated. I get one XP, so I'm up to six. I just need one more and I'll level up. And I now get to choose one of these rewards on the bottom here. I can get a basic item. I guess the bear um, had a sword, uh, or I can grab one leaf. Basic item I think is gonna be more useful for me. So I will grab basic item. It is Jester's Gloves. Gives me extra sneak, but, oh yeah, no. I've got, uh, so there's different slots that you have in your you know, person. I've got a ring slot here. I've got two of those because the lock picking tools takes up one of them. You know, the Jester's Glove will take up another one. And now my sneak is improved. Instead of rolling four dice, I'm going to be rolling five. But there's one more uh, monster to face and it is another mud crab. This should be easy. Um, I'm sneaking up on it. Again, now I'm rolling five dice. Do that, I'm able to do it. Spend the, uh, refresh that, spin a thing, kill it dead, get another XP, and now I have seven, which is exactly what I need to level up. I'm gonna do that at the end of the round though. Um, so next we go to left brain, and we are in our quest location. The quest, which had three of these tokens, thankfully are gone now, uh, it says, I'll try to round up a number of motivated cutthroats and point them in the right direction. That way I'll just stroll in afterwards to take the spoils. So my objective is to hire mercenaries. Rolling three dice, I don't have any speech, so that's all I get. I'm gonna get three of these Celtic knots from those three dice, but for every coin I spend, I can roll another die. So let's start off. Uh, start off on them dice. So I got two, pretty good. I've got five money, so I'm gonna spend one. I'll just do one at a time uh, to roll an extra die. Try and get that third Celtic knot. There it is. I have greased some palms and succeeded in my quest. My negotiation skills save the day. Gain two XP. Flip that over. Oh, I'm almost at seven over here. And one advanced item. Ooh, an advanced item. I get a glass helmet. Uh, this will give me a, a, an extra die for dodge and aim actions. Ooh. I'll talk about dodge in just a second. So then I place a token next to solitude. Oh, that's right here. The, uh, the mercenaries make a quick job of the bandits. They also take most of the treasure. However, I find disquieting evidence regarding Moiva Karnai. Uh, all right, so I need to then grab card 180. So 180 is not in here, and that's, there's a reason for that. Um, at the beginning of the game, because I'm only playing with two players, it told me to get rid of a couple cards, 180 being one of them. Because 180 is not here, I go to the next highest one, 182, because 181 was also discarded. And this is an evidence card, High Elves. A group of High Elves have been seen meeting Moiva on several occasions. They've exchanged documents and septums. Um, do not flip this card unless uh, until instructed by the player who draws 183. So. Right Brain needs to kind of get with the program and start doing this main quest here so we can actually get there. But in the meantime, I'm able to do, you know, my personal quest and, and level up and gain money and get stronger if I want to. So uh, that's sort of the end of the round, but Right Brain has to level up now because he's got seven XP. Once you get the amount that you need to level up, you actually can't gain any more XP. And at the end of the round, you will uh, level up one space. So I think, uh, there are a couple of different ways I can go, but basically I can choose any of these skills to improve my character with. Uh, so do I want to improve my character in a fighting way? Do I want to become better at uh, something that I know is gonna come up? I could get speech, which will help me with this quest. Speech does come up sometimes in quests, but it doesn't help me in combat, whereas uh, the combat abilities will always help me roll more dice, but won't necessarily help me in, in quests or anything like that. Um, now, because I'm a Nord, if I learn two-handed, which will generally just give me an extra die 
uh, whenever I'm rolling with two-handed weapons. This will also add one damage uh, to any two-handed two weapon attack. So it improves my ability to hit with two-handed weapons. I have a two weapon, two-handed weapon equipped, so that makes sense. But I can also learn smithing. Smithing uh, makes, because um, the Nord uh, specializes in smithing as well, upgrades cost one or fewer, which means I could just, uh, things normally cost two ore to smith, I could just get them for one. That seems pretty good. Plus, there's this quest in Whiterun, which is, uh, which wants you to, to craft there as well, and it improves if you have smithing. So I think I'm gonna get smithing. Smithing is one of these red skills. Let me find smithing skill and place it into my little container here. And then I'm going to take this little token here. Zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. There's this little knot here, which is sort of the end of the track for me, even though it can go a little further. But I can take this token out, if you have fingernails, and move it one space to the left. Because I have gotten a red skill, I am improving my health along with it. But now I'm at the point where if I fight anything that is a zero, uh, any any level zero monsters, those are going to get removed from the deck afterwards. Unlike uh, what just happened with the uh, with the bear and the mud crab, those just went back to the top of the deck. Uh, oh yeah, and got shuffled with the top card. There are three level zeros on the top card, so until you get to that point, you're just going to keep facing the same stuff. So I have gone uh, there. I've leveled myself up. I've gotten rid of all of my XP, and now I'm heading back towards. What are you? You're Riften as well, I think? Yeah, yeah, you're Riften. Um, so, my Nord has now learned to smith. I'm gonna do that real quick. Let's, let's say, future round. I'm in Riften, I'm gonna do some smithing. It's the same as, uh, as enchanting, basically. I'm gonna take this uh, ore token because upgrades cost one fewer. So let's say I wanna upgrade my Iron Battle Axe. I'm gonna take this ore, I'm gonna spend it. Now, because I have improved my smithing, I also get to draw an additional card. With the enchantment, I only got to draw one card. I'm going to be smithing. I get to draw two. And I will get to choose one of them. So it's the same cards, but uh, as you can see, they can be used in a number of different ways. What I'm looking at right now are the upgrades, this bottom right triangle. If I were upgrading armor, I would be looking at this bottom space here. I think I was saying I was going to upgrade my battle axe, though. So I'm looking at these numbers, and what those are referring to are the attacks. So if I'm choosing this plus one, it's going to upgrade that top attack, the swing. Swings are easier to land, but they do less damage. However, it is more versatile. I can choose to do heavy damage or light damage, and now it'll do plus one. Or if I'm choosing down here, then I'm doing plus two to that chop. And because I'm kind of going this sneaky two-handed weapon guy, I, uh, that might actually be pretty good to do. I can do six damage, and if I upgrade my two-handed abilities, then I'll be doing seven damage. I think that's pretty good. So I'm getting this upgrade, and I just sort of place it beneath like that. Now, after you've upgraded, that's all I can do. This is the only upgrade I can put on this Iron Battle Axe. If, uh, now the, the robes are a little different. They can be enchanted as many times as they want, but that's just the special thing about robes. Anything else, you can only enchant, you can only craft or upgrade it, you know, just once. Um, so that's what I've done uh, with that. The other, uh, my, my Dunmer over there, I think for, I would try to improve my destruction spells. Because if I gain destruction, then uh, I'll get plus one damage to all destruction spells. Um, also, if a robe is equipped, if I learn light armor, if a robe is equipped, I'll get plus one light armor to it. Seems pretty good. These are things that are useful, but you don't have to stick with them. But anyway, uh, I think this has given you a pretty decent idea of the gameplay of Skyrim. So if you want to hear uh, me and uh, Rado's final thoughts on this game, then why don't you click on that link in the top right corner uh, or in the show notes below, and we will see you there in three, two, one. Bye-bye.